Good morning everyone, my name is Brendan Mitchell. I'm uh, on my mother's side of the family, uh, Marawara Barkindji, from down Lake Victoria, um, Darling River people. And my father's side, we're Arunda Walpuri, Tanamai Desert, uh, Northern Territory. And what I'm going to do this morning is, is to tell a few, few Dreamtime stories. The first story I'm going to tell is how the koala became the koala and why he lives up in the tree. So a long time ago, there was a, an Aboriginal tribe or clan and um, there, there was a young fellow whose parents had died and this poor little boy, he had no one to go and get him food and water. He, what he used to do was he'd wait until the rest of the family had gone out and go and gather food and, and water. And while they were gone out, this little boy would run over and he'd steal food and, and water. And the family had come back and they'd, they'd look around and realise some of the food and water had gone missing. So anyway, the next day, the rest of the tribe went out to get some food and water and the little boy would sneak over and grab a little bit of food and a little bit of water. And the men came back and they saw the little boy and what he was doing. So what they did is they started to chase this little boy and he'd run and run, he'd climb and hide up a tree and they'd throw rocks at him. And then at the end of the little boy would stay up there all day and he'd wait until it was dark and that little boy would come down again and he'd do the same thing again the next day. He'd wait for the family to go and get food and water while they'd gone out. He'd sneak over and grab a little bit of food and a little bit of water. And the same thing, the family, the tribe had come home and they'd realised the food and water had gone missing. And they chased the little boy back up the tree again and throw rocks at him. And the little boy would wait up the tree until it got dark and then he'd come back down again. Same thing again the next day. But on this particular day, something happened. So Biami had been watching this little boy and Biami spoke to the little boy and the rest of the family. And Biami said to the little boy, little boy, young fellow, I've been watching you. Every day you get chased looking for food and water and every day you run up the tree and you, you stay there. So today, I'm going to change you into the koala. And the rest of the tribe, they walked away and the little boy, he went up in the gum tree and he changed into a koala. Now, if you have a look at that little koala, he's the only one that can eat those gum leaves. And that little koala, he doesn't need to come down from that tree anymore. He can stay up there. He gets his water and his food from the gum leaves. And there's no other animal or no other living creature that eats those gum leaves except for the koala. So he's got all that food for the rest of his life. And that's how the koala became the koala. This next story is a story about why the whale swims up and down the coast of Australia. So a long, long time ago, there was a whale man. And the whale man, because he was the biggest animal, he had the biggest boat. And the, every day the kangaroo, koala and emu man, they would walk down to the beach and they would look out in the ocean and they could see an island long way out into the water. But they couldn't get out there because they never had a boat big enough to carry them. And they knew the only boat big enough to carry the three animals was the whale man's boat. Now the whale man, he loved his boat and he'd never share that boat with anyone. So one day the three animals, the kangaroo, koala and emu, they tried to work out a plan and how to get the whale man's boat. And they came up with an idea. The koala man said, why don't we have a chat to the starfish man? Because the starfish man is good buddies with the whale fish man. And because the whale and the starfish man, they both come and live in this, from the same country. So the next day, they called over to the starfish man 
and the starfish man come over and the, and the emu said to the starfish man, starfish man, we need to use the whale man's boat. But we know the whale man, he doesn't like sharing his boat, so we're going to need you to help us trick the whale man. And the starfish man, he was getting a bit nervous and the starfish man said, I don't know if I want to trick the whale man because he's such a big man and if he finds out that I've lied to him and tricked him, it's not going to look pretty and he's going to get angry with me. And the kangaroo man said, oh look, it's all right, the, the whale man won't find out. What we'll get you to do is to get the whale man to lie down and while he's lying down, we'll sneak out and grab his boat. <clears throat> and we'll jump in the water because you see that island out there that's where we want to go so the starfish man he thought about it and he said all right I'll, I'll help you so the next day the starfish man went to the whale man and he said whale man my best mate why don't you lay your head in my lap and I'll clean the barnacles off your head and the whale man, he looked down at the starfish man and he said, Oh, starfish man, you're the best friend any man could have. And the whale man laid his head down in the starfish man's lap. And the starfish man started cleaning the barnacles off the whale man's head. And the whale man was lying there and he said, Starfish man, is my boat still there? And the starfish man, he panicked. He panicked, he said, Oh... And he grabbed a stick and he tapped the stick on the rock. He said, yeah, it's still here because what's happened? The kangaroo, koala and emu man, they'd already snuck out. They'd grabbed the whale man's boat and they're paddling out to sea. So the whale man was lying there in the sun again and the whale man said, starfish man, you're such a good mate cleaning the barnacles off my head. And the starfish man said, oh, no worries, whale man, I'd do anything for you. So the whale man continued to lay there and the starfish man kept picking the barnacles off his head. And the whale man said, starfish man, is my boat still there? And the starfish man grabbed his stick and he tapped it on the rock. He said, yeah, it's still here. And the whale man said, oh, I love my boat. It's the best thing I've ever had. I don't know what I'd do if my boat went missing. And the starfish man, he kept cleaning the whale man's head. And a little while later, the whale man said to the starfish man, Starfish man, is my boat still there? And the starfish man again grabbed his stick, tapped it on the rock, and he said, Yeah, it's still here. And the whale man, he stopped for a minute and he thought, that doesn't sound like my boat. And the whale man, he sat up and had a look and his boat was gone. And the whale man looked out to the ocean and he could see his boat with the koala, the emu and the kangaroo in it. And the star whale man, he knew the starfish man had tricked him. Well, next thing you know, there was a big fight. The whale man, he jumped up in the air and he sat on the starfish man and he squashed him. The starfish man, he jumped up in the air, he did a somersault and he landed on top of the whale man's head and he bit him on the head. And then the starfish man fell off and he sank to the bottom of the water. Well, the whale man jumped into the water and he started swimming after his boat. But by the time he found the boat, it was too late. The kangaroo, koala and emu man they already landed on the island and they pushed the boat back out to sea and off it went in the current. And the whale man, he swam up and down the river, up and down the water looking for his boat. And the koala man, he was the one that paddled the boat. And he was so tired, that koala man, he climbed up the tree and he went to sleep. So to this day, that koala man, he still sleeps up in the tree, tired from paddling the boat. The whale man, he still swims up and down the ocean with his family, looking for his boat, blowing water through the bite on the top of his head. And the starfish man, he's still flat and still lives in the bottom of the ocean. 
And that's the story of why the whale still swims up and down the coast of Australia, looking for his boat, blowing water through the bite on the top of his head. This next story is a story about how the Harbour Bridge was made. Now a long time ago there was a giant kangaroo and this giant kangaroo was the biggest kangaroo ever. This giant kangaroo was bigger than any buildings. And this giant kangaroo, he hopped down to the river and he started to drink the water. And then he got scared, he heard a noise, so he sat up and he listened. And he smelt the air. He could smell someone coming. So what he did was the giant kangaroo, he went to jump over the river. Because that giant kangaroo had been standing in the mud for so long, his feet sank and he got stuck. So when the kangaroo jumped, he tripped. He didn't jump, he tripped. So the giant kangaroo, he's falling into the river and he stretched his front feet and he reached the other side of the river. So this giant kangaroo, he's got his back feet on this side and he stretched over the river and his front feet are on this side. And that poor kangaroo, he tried to get out of there, but his front feet got stuck as well. And he died over the river, this giant kangaroo. And the only thing that's left of that giant kangaroo are the bones of the giant kangaroo over the river. And those giant kangaroo bones, that's Sydney Harbour Bridge. And what made that giant kangaroo scared was a giant hunter. And the giant hunter, he was sneaking up behind the giant kangaroo. And he threw his spear, but because the giant kangaroo didn't jump up, the spear went straight over the top and it stuck in the ground. And then what happened was termites went up the spear and hollowed it out. And there's a restaurant at the top of the spear now. And that spear, that's called Centerpoint Tower. And that's the story of how the Harbour Bridge and Centrepoint Tower was made. Thank you everyone for having me here today. I hope you enjoyed those stories and um, you have enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>